And uh, I don't ever want to be the type of person that won't accept the truth when it hits me in the face. And uh, I want you to open your Bibles tonight to Zechariah chapter number 5. Zechariah chapter number 5. And this is not really the basic scripture for this message. It's just one I want to read you. And uh, get me up on this here, Roy. And I want you to uh, go ahead and get these lights here, Brother John, if you will. And leave the rest of them up for a minute. And I thought we'd enjoy this tonight and get a little prophecy and find out where we are on God's calendar and see how close it is to coming of the Lord. I don't know about you, but things like that excite me. And I don't claim to know every... I don't claim to know every uh, aspect or detail or the subject I'm going to talk about tonight. I don't claim to be an expert, but I sure don't claim to be ignorant about it either. Because I studied this for about a year and off and on for about five years. And I've, I've been to Roswell, New Mexico, where a lot of the modern day UFO movement and beliefs, uh, beliefs got started. Matter of fact, Brother Chuck Freeze sitting here tonight is one that took me. He took me down there when I was preaching in Texas last year, and uh, I told him I want to go to Roswell, because if you've seen all these specials they put on the Discovery Channel, Learning Channel, all that stuff, you know that Roswell, New Mexico is one of the most uh, well-documented, irrefutable cases of uh, UFO contacts in, in history, and what happened there on uh, July the 4th, 1947, which is 50 years before July the 4th, 1997, Independence Day. And, uh, but when that thing happened in July 4th, 1947, the government knew, and I won't say all government officials because all government officials don't know it. A lot of times you'll talk to government officials and say, do you know about this stuff? And they'll say no, and they're telling the truth. All of them don't. But what most people don't understand is there is the government and then there's a government. There's an elite, what we'd say government, that our main government knows nothing about what they do. As a matter of fact, there's such a thing as the Black Project. And this is, this is absolutely a fact. I'm not shooting you just a bunch of junk or hearsay. There's a Black Project. There's a Black Budget in our nation. And there... Spending is accountable to no one. That's where the Men in Black movie was patterned after, the Black Project, the Black Budget. Billions and millions of dollars are spent on projects and they do not have to give an account to the government of where it's being spent. Their uh, target place is a place called Area 51 out in Nevada. And what happened in what it looks like happened, in my opinion, that in 1947, that's the year before Israel became a nation, that's the last generation, God didn't let it happen until this generation, the last days that you and I are living in. This thing began to manifest itself and people began to see things in the sky in the spring and summer of 1947. They were not airplanes. They were not helicopters. They were not clouds. Now, an airplane, they're here tonight. <laughs> an airplane uh, goes like this, and an airplane will fly across the sky. If an airplane stops, it will fall out of the sky. I'm going to show you videotape tonight of home video cameras of objects that do this, and stop in the sky and then do this, and then do this, and ain't no meteor ever done that. Since the advent of the home video camera, things have changed. This has been the last five years. And most of what I'm going to show you tonight has been the last five years. There in, in, in over Mexico City, which seems to be a hot spot, there are so many manifestations that on a... On a uh, the day there's all people out there and having a big festival looking for the solar eclipse. And 17 people videoed the same craft over the city of New Mexico. And I'm going to show it to you in a minute, some of that video. And 17 video cameras got the same thing on it. And over all 100 video cameras shot things in the sky that night. 
So any of the people that's going around saying, Danny Castle's weird, he's got some weird blood. You know what your problem is? You're just ignorant and don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Amen. You th do you honestly think I'm dumb enough to get up here and spit my mouth off about something like this that I don't even know what I'm talking about? I want to show it to you. Show it to you. Them, you say, well, they can fake them video cameras. A hundred of them showing the same thing. You know one reason why I believe UFOs are real? Because they're so hard to believe in. Something fights you from believing it. There's a spirit working against you believing in it. And I don't claim to have all answers. Some seem to be physical. Some seem to be metaphysical or paraphysical or just completely uh, an illusion. They can disappear. They can reappear. Which brings me to the belief that we are seeing in these last days as the world sets up for the Antichrist a move of Satan and his forces in which he's able to transform himself and appear to be things that he's not. And that's the bottom line. That's where I'm coming from tonight. That's where I'm coming from. They are not people from outer space. There are no people in outer space. Bible said heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool and the earth hath he given to the children of men and there is no scripture reference at all to anybody coming from any other planet. Man naturally thinks, oh, these, these, uh, these advanced beings are come to enlighten us and teach us how they made it on other planets and we must listen to their message because uh, I'm going to show you a, a satellite in a minute. That's 1,500 feet across. You think the government don't believe in UFOs? Why do they spend a million dollars on a satellite 1,500 feet across, put it down there in Rio de Janeiro somewhere, point that thing toward the sky, and they got people surveilling it all the time trying to pick up signals. They know something's out there. They know it. Every major airline pilot has spotted them on purpose, but they're not allowed to talk about it because if it gets in the paper, people think they're crazy, and nobody's going to get on an airplane with a crazy pilot that sees UFOs. A friend of mine's a preacher in Texas. His brother's an airline pilot. He said, do you see them? He said, yes, I've seen them several occasions, but we are fired if we mention it. So what happened is this. The government couldn't explain them. They were seen all over the place in the 47, 48, 49. Kenneth Arnold was a pilot flying over the Cascade Mountains in June of 1947, and he saw about eight or nine of them skipping like you'd skip a rock across the water like this. And he coined the term flying saucer. And that's where that, that term come from, shaped like a saucer. Um, the government said, what are they? We don't know. They said, can we shoot them? No, we can't catch them. I have, uh, it's on record in Fort Knox, Kentucky, Godman uh, Air Force Base up there near Fort Knox, Kentucky, where a pilot saw one, a giant metallic object over his head. He said, I'm going to shoot up to take a closer look. He got to 20,000 feet, and he said, it's big, it's bright. I've never seen anything like it. And his radio went off and they never heard from him again. And they went out and found his plane crashed. And now this is all on record. I, I got the documentation at home and can prove it to you. It's all in the papers and everything. I think it was around 1955, 60, somewhere along in there. And the last thing you ever heard was, and they said that plane was just like it just crumbled up all the pieces. Some of the planes are melted. Some of the, it's not just crashed. There's such intense heat that it melts them. And his watch had stopped 10 minutes before that he ever crashed. And they didn't know nothing about stuff like what I'm going to preach to you tonight here in, in this generation of demons and demon movies and stuff like that. So what's happening basically is this. The devil knows it's the last days. The devil knows he don't have much time. The devil knows we're running out of time and the Bible said he can be transformed into an angel of light. I know people that have seen stuff like I saw the devil and I shook this one's hand all that kind of stuff. They're not all lying, folks. They're not all lying. 
There's, there's manifestations of evil as the Holy Ghost pulls off the land, as God's people rebel against Him, as revival tarries, as the devil makes his move on this land. There will definitely be more stronger manifestations of evil in this world. Don't you doubt it for a second. Now, look here in Zechariah chapter 5. Zechariah chapter 5, look at verse number 1. You see it in your Bible? In your King James Bible, Zechariah chapter number 1. And I want to show you something here. And we'll get started here in just a second. We're, we're going to get right into the message. Uh, Zechariah chapter 5, verse number 1. Here we go. He said, Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. A flying roll. You say, what is that? I don't know what it is. It's unidentified. And you don't know what it is. You say, that's a Bible. A 30-foot Bible? You say, I believe it's a Bible. Well, might be, I don't know. But it sure don't sound like it. Read the rest of it. And he said, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof, 20 cubics. That's a foot and a half for each cubic, 30 feet. That's the same size as that one they said come down to Roswell. Same size. And the length thereof, 10 cubits, 15 feet. You say, that's the Bible. Really? Look at the next verse. Then saith he, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. Reckon that's a Bible? Curse over the face of the earth? I got a Schofield Bible right here. He says, he says it's a scripture. You say, Schofield's a great man. Yeah, I know. The Bible says great men are not always wise. I don't know what it is. It's unidentified. And it flies. Have you ever heard them talking about look like a cigar? All the pilots say look like a floating cigar. You say, well, I ain't never seen that. Well, I reckon that means there ain't no such thing because you ain't seen it, don't it? Ye are the people and wisdom shall die with you. <laughs> All right, let's get started here. I'm going to show you some video. The video camera has proved it. You don't have to argue it no more. The question ain't, the question ain't, are UFOs real? That's not even a question. You know, I have that argument stirred up here back last year, or this year really, is in February, and everybody flipped out, and the whole town was writing newspapers, and everybody's calling, people's calling. The question ain't, are they there, people? There's no question about it. The question is, what am they? That's what the question is. And I'm a Bible believer. I interpret everything, scientific events, historical events, in the light of the Scripture. We don't interpret the Bible in the light of science. We interpret science in the light of the Scripture. And I believe, according to the Scripture, there ain't no Scripture from them being from up there. There's plenty of Scripture from them being from down there. Plenty of it. And I'm going to show it to you tonight. Okay? Now, if I can get this thing started, I've never done this but once. Uh, tonight, so I'm just going to stop it and comment a little bit, and I'm going to give you the proofs of what's going on, and then tell you what you can do about it, and we'll just enjoy this tonight, just enjoy yourself, go ahead and get the lights, fellas, and uh, as we start tonight, we can get the picture right and everything, I'll set this up in here this evening, and somebody ain't kicked it, hey, amen, somebody can plug these little wreath things up here for me, let's look at it tonight, okay? I love, I love to make movies. It's just like it was sliding through the sky, and it tilted like it was looking down. I'm going to make me a real movie one of these days if I ever have time. One time, and there against the black sky was a, was a white object at about a 45-degree angle. From the his, his mountain, we shaped three lights on each corner coming over my house. Mysterious lights in the sky. They were like stars. Sound. Uh, it just like was sliding through the sky and it mm -hmm. tilted like it was looking down at us. And it was a like, bright light that dimmed down to a white speck and went... All these people's on LSD, I reckon. ...down to a white speck and then just disappeared. You guys watching this inside? It's going out. What's that? Going straight out. Are these people sighting extraterrestrial spacecraft? Or is their imagination fueled by movies, books, experimental aircraft? Holy cow! To answer these questions, we have to look back at the history of UFO sightings. Object outside the window caught his attention. I happened to glance out one time, and there against the black sky was a, was a white object. Uh, geometry of it was sort of like a, 
a beer can or a Coke can with a Whoa. with a pencil Look sticking out the, or the round edges at about a 45 degree angle. Flying beer what can. was it? McDevitt did snap a few pictures, but after turning the film over to NASA, the film mysteriously disappeared. Was it a clerical error? The images are scratched, out of focus, or the camera's just too far away to see things. All right, now let's stop there just a second. That fella hit the nail on the head. He said, after that film that astronaut McDivitt saw, the film was turned over to NASA, and then it disappeared, and nobody can get a hold of it anymore. Now, what's happened is this, and I meant to say this a minute ago, but let me say this, and we'll go right on with the video. Now, listen to me. What happened is the government got, knew they were there and does know they're there, and they can't explain it, and they can't figure out what they're doing, but they figure this. They figure nobody's ever been hurt, as far as we know. They're not a threat to national security. That's what the government always said. They are not a threat to national security. So the government had that Project Blue Book, and they investigated this and that, you know, and other. And they said, uh, since they're not a threat to national security, we're no longer interested in them. They said this. They said, we can't catch them, we can't shoot them, we can't stop them. If we tell the public this, the public will panic and it will underline, undermine our government. It will undermine religion. They said churches will flip out because they'll realize that the Bible's not true. That's what they think. They said the people will panic and it will tear up society as we know it. So we choose to cover up the evidence because facing the truth about it would be more of a threat to national security than covering it up would be. So they say they're not hurting us, let's just leave them alone. And that's why when you see something about UFOs on TV, it's always a science fiction movie instead of the truth from the government pages in, in, uh, in Washington and the files. Now, watch it now tonight. As we, as we go along, I'll try to let this play just as much as I can so you can, uh, uh, so you can get all in it, okay? Advent of the home video camera. More and more people have captured unexplained phenomena on tape. This home video was shot over Las Vegas in what's early this, What's these maneuvers? It shows three objects floating and diving in front of the mountains. This is a spectacular maneuver. As you say, it goes in front of the mountains and has the mountains as a backdrop, which gives you a fairly good idea of its distance. July 2nd, 1947, ufology. There have been more than 200,000 UFO sightings. Most are single craft witnessed by a single individual, making it virtually impossible for researchers to verify. But since 1991, ufologists have been documenting the largest mass sighting in history in the skies over Mexico City. The sightings began on July 11th, 1991. On that day, there was a total eclipse of the sun. One of the best places in the world to view the eclipse. Now was check out how this, these nuts view them in Mexico. The whole video Especially this Catholic priest. Look at that. People That's a video. their video cameras to the skies. Exactly at the time of the full solar eclipse, a disc-shaped craft appears over the city, hovers for over 30 minutes. 17 Watch people it. on the ground that recorded is. it on home video. And that's never happened before <laughs> in the history <laughs> of ufology. When modern scientists forecasted the date of the historic solar eclipse, there's one to now. Live in the skies over Mexico. Hundreds of those home video cameras that were shooting the eclipse got something completely unexpected. UFOs, unidentified flying move? objects, all videotaped by hundreds of different people. So far, more than 110 home videos have been verified as containing footage of unexplained craft. Practically every afternoon you can see a UFO. Jaime Masson is one of the most respected television journalists in Mexico City today, hosting a Mexican version of 60 Minutes. Masson calls himself a former skeptic. During the last year, people are definitely not nervous or afraid of the appearances of the UFOs. The people actually like the idea and feel that these appearances can bring some benefit to the earth. See, that's Antichrist. and eyewitnesses willing to come forward. Padre Ferrer, a priest at a local Catholic church, 
has seen and recorded these mysterious UFOs. Check that out now. This is a priest. Look Christ what he says about speaks of um, his kingdom as not being from this world. He thinks they're coming from Jesus' kingdom. He said, Christ said his kingdom was not from this world. And these are angels, people, coming to help us. Weird, man. Wonder why somebody would take that view. Why, why would somebody think that little, little demons look like, with their skin look like a snake skin, sneaking around at night, you know, taking blood samples from the world and scaring people to death is Jesus' kingdom? would help him. But these writings are very dangerous and I came out to take a video of that pine tree against the light. When I came up, I saw the light appear over the mountain over there. It was not an ordinary light. It was um, blue and very intense. I've never been afraid of something like this. On the contrary, what I've been able to observe has been wonderful. He's firm. As far as the pictures of in-flight videos, this is about as good as I've seen. They demonstrate a, a field propulsion and technology that's far beyond anything that I'm aware of. You know of that what we propulsion is? That means, propulsion means how, what makes a plane move. Like one can go straight up, like a helicopter, it's got a certain kind of propulsion. What they can't figure out is how they can go straight up and then cut sideways, which a plane, no man-made craft can make. A man said, well, the government's got things so far advanced, we don't know what they are. Not that can go from outer space from here and cut side right-angle turns and disappear. The government ain't got nothing like that. It's impossible by man's standards. These areas are attracting flaps. Hot spots. Watch this. The hot spot is Gulf Breeze, Florida, here in America right now. Right near Pensacola, these kids have been where we're getting ready to show. The heavily populated city of Sao Paulo has had hundreds of sightings by thousands of people. These flaps have prompted researchers to try that. to find a common pattern or motive. Anybody who studies this soon becomes... In the United States, sightings are widespread right and occur almost nightly. America's number one hotspot is Gulf Breeze, Florida. Ralph Fuller's sighting in 1988. Now watch this. We went down there. That's the beach we took y'all to. Remember kids? We took kids out because there's nobody there. We let the girls out. They swim. We go down about a mile. Boys swim. But it's not, not where these people are, but it's way on down where there's nothing. And that's the beach. There's nothing out there but the Gulf of Mexico. This fella here got this on his video camera one night. Now, you, my audience here tonight, you've got one of two choices. Either he faked this or it's real. If he faked it, it's been subjected to scientific tests. They do everything in the world. They can take that film. They can tell if something's been put over it. They can tell if it's been double exposed. This is a genuine home video shot by this man out over the Gulf. You can see the, see the uh, waves coming in out there. You'll see them in this video. It's at night, and these things split off of each other, just like the brown mountain lights. They'll be like two, then they'll turn into three, and then they'll split up. Then they go back together and into one and then disappear up in the sky. Here we go. Now watch it. It's either a fake or it's real. If this was the only one there was, I'd say, ah, probably somebody faked it. But uh, hundreds of people getting the same thing from all over the country. Well, you know, you got to... But Ralph was the first to capture a UFO. There's where it come from, right out there. This is at night. There it is. Now you watch, see the waves down here? It's out there over the Gulf, but we just... just had a... Uh... Real bright light. See the water's way down here. It ain't a boat. See that? The water down here, that's the waves coming in. That's the sky. Just had a uh, real bright light. I think it might be a flying saucer. They seem to spawn one another. The, the, the two went to three and four and uh, all the way uh, over a matter of maybe a couple of minutes time uh, there were 10 of these uh... now you see 
If you just saw them things sitting there, you'd think, well, it's on pause and that's helicopters moving. But you see the waves flipping over. It ain't on pause. It's floating. I mean, the camera's moving. And uh, they seem to be in some semblance of a formation, but still in all, there was no movement whatsoever, no noise, no sound, nothing of that sort. You see nothing but the Gulf of Mexico. That's uh, something? The right up there is where he filmed at. The and these things are about right there. There were no boats or anything. Of There's that. your waves coming in. Type in the area either. A matter of maybe a couple of minutes. I'm going to get you if you don't hush. Uh, there were ten of these uh, lights out over the Gulf. And uh, they seem to be in some semblance of a formation. See, that, see them waves moving in? There was no movement whatsoever, no noise, no sound, nothing of that sort. You see nothing but the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the nearest point of land would be the Yucatan Peninsula. And there were no boats or anything of that uh, type in the area either. Watching Area for One is a good field of view, that is uh, being able to have a unobstructed view of the skyline. It's in a perfect circle gliding and, and performing maneuvers in the sky. Uh, we've seen uh, uh, rows of lights uh, suggesting lights uh, perhaps around uh, the periphery of a craft. Oh, I think that it's a reverse. If we are dealing with an alien uh, culture and they are doing something underground, they're using the natural magnetic anomalies to disguise their own magnetic signals. Are you saying there are or could be aliens in the Earth? That guy's got it right. Certain. It is definitely possible, based on what I've seen. Do you realize how that sounds? I don't like the idea just simply because it is so outrageous. Then I would have to also add some of the photographic data that I have that shows, at least in one particular case, a UFO going up at a seven degree dive right down into the ground, what appears to be. Man. Going in one the of the most well 1992. We think in excess of a thousand people may have seen two, three ships or four ships where I took video. Thousand and people saying that. All the police departments across the whole uh, lower New York State area was simply inundated with just hundreds and hundreds of calls. We looked over the top of the trees, and there was this object there out of nowhere. This great big he object. Like it was about one. 300 hundred foot wide, the size of a football field, hanging over okay. your head, and about 300 foot off the ground. We looked at our clocks, and we had three battery running clocks, two in the kitchen and one in the living room. And for some strange reason, all three clocks were stopped at the same time. Now. Don't forget Venus, that. it's not the Aurora Borealis or These a meteor. don't even it's know not nothing about an what aircraft now. that we can name. Look at that. Uh, then we are talking something. What in the world good. is that, people? Was that a meteor landing on sideways? One country is bucking that trend. Belgium has acknowledged tracking unidentified, seemingly intelligently controlled craft in its airspace. What's it? Radar tapes released by the Air Force show an object jumping from 200 meters to 2,000 meters in one second, that a is distance a radar. of just over a mile. The Belgium Air Force has even put aside a plane to search for the objects. But the attitude of the United States remains very different. UFO experts claim our government is conducting top-secret research into UFOs in the middle of the Nevada desert. South of a dry lake bed known as Area 51 is a place known as S-4. Area 51 is what the, uh, they had the uh, Independence Day facility. movie about. In the course of our investigation, the hidden we found underground a place. And it's there. It's there. there. Robert I, know, I know a guy who's been there. This guy used to work there. Listen to his testimony was shocked when he first discovered through the hangar and uh, immediately uh, even before entering the hangar you can see the edge of a disc uh, this is your classic flying saucer two inverted pie plates if you wish uh, with a segmented larger area dome on top within minutes of that I finally realized that this had nothing to do with something the government was producing and it was quite shocking because everything inside was small. This is a full-size craft, 30, 35 feet in diameter, maybe 40. And the size uh, of that thing? But you're 30, looking at, at uh, 
have seats that are, you know, 18 inches off the ground, obviously made, you know, for, for something smaller. It certainly wasn't made for children to play in. Lazar says there were nine spaceships in all, and he claims to have seen all, and he claims to have seen one fly. It began to lift off the ground almost silently. There was a hiss sound, uh, like a corona discharge, if you hear around high voltage systems, uh, accompanied by a faint, it probably would have been brighter at, at night, a faint uh, blue glow around the bottom as the craft approached about 30 feet, 20 feet, something like that off the ground, uh, that corona discharge disappeared. Uh, the sound stopped and the craft stood there silently. And Reporter George Knapp was able to track down a few of Lazar's colleagues who could confirm parts of his story. But when they talked to Knapp, something strange happened. One after another had, had visits from, from government personnel who basically intimidated or told them to back off, followed them around. There didn't have to be any direct communication where an agent says, you keep talking to this guy, you're going to end up in a river. The message was very clear. That's a reporter from Las Vegas. While our cameras were there, What's a this? bright light appeared in the night sky. Utterly silent, it seemed to float below the mountaintops. Analysis of our videotape proved inconclusive. Those who might know the answers aren't talking. I've been covering organized crime in Las Vegas for, for 10 years, dealing with uh, mob hitmen and mob informants, uh, people who have been in the witness protection program. The fear that is generated by this UFO subject for people who really know about it far outweighs the kind of fear that the mob inspires. I mean, people are more afraid of our government than they are of organized crime. Well, I am exactly sure of what I saw. I know what means. You know, when I was in, down in uh, Roswell, New Mexico, I talked to Glenn Dennis personally. And Glenn Dennis run the funeral home there in Roswell. As you're getting ready to see, a uh, fellow here, he's an expert on it. This guy right here, he's a nuclear physicist. See, some people think that everybody that sees UFOs, you know, just got out of the nut house and they're, you know, bent, blew their mind on drugs and stuff. This guy's got more education than anybody in McDowell County. And I'm telling you, brother, well, that's ain't saying a lot, but... <laughs> smart Alex. But... But uh, you know something? I mean, this guy, I mean, he got it up here. There ain't no doubt about it. This fellow's got it upstairs. And Ted Koppel's got him on here. And I want you to listen to what this fellow says. Companies as General Electric, Westinghouse, and General Motors. He has studied and lectured on UFOs for almost 30 years and is in Washington this week taking part in the International Symposium of the Mutual UFO Network. Mr. Friedman, there are books, there are magazine articles, there are television interview programs which have very little time, such as this one. Give it your best shot. If you are seeking to convince, uh, to convince the skeptical, what do you point to? I'm seeking con to convince the healthy agnostics. The skeptics don't want to listen to the data in my findings. I point to the 2,400-plus landing trace cases, physical changes in the environment. countries. I point to the 3,200 cases in Project Blue Book Special Report 14, 20% of which couldn't be explained at all the characteristics we attribute to flying saucers. I point to the 3,500 pilot sightings collected by a NASA scientist on the West Coast. I point to Bud Hopkins' 140 abduct with a waiting list of 200, and an enormous amount of data in the form of documents, uh, some of them obtained from the government directly, some not so directly uh, clearly indicating that our planet is being visited, that some UFOs are alien spacecraft, and that we are indeed dealing with a cosmic water gate. Not a decent still. Four years. An individual. He's looked at the original negatives, examined them very carefully. You can see there's... All right, now what he's saying here is you take a picture like that right there, a farmer in Kansas takes. And they've been examined and examined and examined, not to be a fake. And you see that one? That comes from somewhere like Australia. 
and they're exactly alike. If they're fakes, the guy in Kansas who never heard of the guy in Australia, and they both come up with the same picture and fake them both, You decide. My mind's made up. You make up your own mind. See the van. First one, sort of a hat with the dome on. So later, and 7,000 miles away, includes Romania. They have another set of three pictures. There were three witnesses to this one, two people watching the guy take the pictures. They were analyzed in Romania, again in England. Public That's from Romania. Journals of Flying Saucer Review. Here's what he's saying. They all look alike, just as obviously our spacecraft don't all... There's a sequence of seven. I've seen the negatives uncut, taken by a professional photographer. There's no building there. There's nothing reflecting off glass. Uh, you can follow the object as it moves from left to right across the sky. And yes, that's the Mormon temple in Salt Lake City. Wow. And then we'll enlarge number five, one through seven there. You don't tell what five. Enlarge what number five. And I think that region around the object is an ionized air plasma related to UFO sightings were captured on home video and film cameras. In 1985, Ocanyon area, an area well known as a powerful energy vortex by many ufologists. In they 1991, hang around, they hang this sighting was captured on videotape. Electrical plants. And they have something to do with electricity. And if one was over top of this building right now, more than likely the power would go out. What is that? And that's why the power always goes out in them movies when the devil shows up. The lights start flashing off and on. Cancels out electricity. Have you ever read the Bible where Jesus said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven? You believe what the Bible says? No sound. I mean, you think about this, man. News and FAA a lot more scriptural than you think it is. Reports of this spectacular footage of four UFOs. Wonder what they'd be doing in Waco, Texas, Salt Lake City, over the Mormon Temple. Checking in, I reckon. They've got them people out there in California, buddy. Them people, you know, that all committed suicide. You ever seen an airplane go around and around? Helicopter? That don't make no noise? guided physical objects with no conventional explanation. They're usually sighted in the air, but sometimes on the ground. Their behavior often suggests advanced technology, and many researchers believe that some UFOs may be extraterrestrial spacecraft. So right over their heads as they've, as they've gotten out, fumbled for their cameras and then uh, shot away. Area 51 is the single and most yeah, amazing thing because first off, we know the military's got them. They just Second off, out in their pure arrogance, Watch they it. really don't care whether or not we see them right or not. And it. third off, it's much easier to make us look crazy because we're just civilians out there than it is to Here test stuff one. over their own land, over Nellis Air Force Base, where uh, uh, experts or uh, people that have something to do with a project or security personnel can actually see come right forward there? and expose All this right. project. But I'm hoping that Area 51 is going to be the camel's nose under the tent, that enough people are going to go out there and start seeing these things, enough people who are skeptical about it, who are going to see these things for themselves and realize, by God, there's something there because this is the singular most important scientific advance in the history of the human race. That's a reporter. This is the biggest kept scientific secret in the history of the human race. And it's getting ready to come out, that everybody's saying. And the Bible said, after the rapture, that the Lord's going to send them strong delusion. And everybody you hear nowadays is talking about is talking about making contact and, and there's got to be something out there. Why do you think they spent all that money going to Mars, millions of dollars, if they don't believe something's out there? Yes, 
They know something's out there. It's just the trick of the devil. The devil makes them think, oh, this is good, this is wonderful, it'll help the world be a better place to live, and it's setting the stage for the Antichrist. About that time, the rapture's going to hit, and we're going to be gone, and then the Holy Ghost is gone, and the demon spirits take over the world, and they land, you know, and, uh, and everybody makes friends, you know, and the world comes out, and the next thing you know, it's set up the stage for the greatest dictator the world's ever seen. All right, let's look at some scripture right quick. I'm going to show you some reasons here right quick with this evening. Here's some scriptures. What does the Bible say about something coming out of the earth? You ever read your Bible? Well, the Bible said the Antichrist is coming and after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Amen. Amen. I don't have a bit of trouble believing the devil's able to work miracles. Look at what he does. He does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven in the sight of men. He can make fireballs come right out of the sky and come down on earth. He had power to give life under the image of the beast. People say the devil don't have power to give life. He's going to in the tribulation. Right there it says it in your book. Look at what the book said. I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. The pit opens up and he comes out of the earth, man. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wise of all they chose. You know the study of that. Them sons of God ain't sons of Seth, like that Schofield note said. They ain't no way that's a godly line of Seth. They were here before Adam and Eve was born. See that? When the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy, that was before creation. Read Job 38. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Don't let it shake you up. Don't let it marvel you. People say, wow, I never believed this. Don't marvel, the Bible says. Listen, people, we are in a real battle. We are in a real war. There's demon spirits and principalities and powers all out there. What an exciting time to be on the Lord's side. What a day, brother, that we got to say, blessed Jesus, hold my hand like I preached the other day. Even so, come quickly, Lord, and get us out of here. Amen. Amen. Look here. Now, let's, let me show you some uh, uh, very interesting angles on this subject tonight. First of all, we'll look at this. There's a strange phenomenon going across our country. They call it cattle mutilation. It started in the 70s. With the sunshine in, the hippie movement, and all the demons of hell. 1969, you know, the world got kicked into high gear toward hell. So I've never heard of this. Well, they don't put it in the news no more because they can't figure out what it is. But there's literally tens of thousands of cattle that have been lifted up off the fields in Kansas, Missouri, Texas, Colorado, and all over foreign countries and have surgical cuts made where half their jaws, their eyeballs, sexual organs, and bladder, reproductive system taken out, and all their blood, and they're laid down on the ground, and not one spot of blood on the ground, and not one footprint leading to or from them, even though some of them's laying in mud. And this is absolute proof. I mean, this is ab- something is getting them. Something's getting them. You saw it's a government project. The government's going out stealing people's cows. Can't they raise them some cows? You got to choose. Watch it. Sounds like them to steal our cows. Probably. Watch this. Now remember, this, somebody said, oh, it's just them satanic cults. Satanic cults don't possess the ability to do what you're getting ready to see here. These are laser surgical cuts. They're not made with a knife. No blood. All their blood is gone. 
in September 1967 on the King Ranch. Since that time, and perhaps even earlier in this century, thousands of cattle, horses, and other animals have been cut up in strange ways throughout the United States, Canada, Puerto Rico, Panama, the Canary Islands, and possibly other South American and European countries. Some people call it cattle mutilation. Whatever it's called, it's a strange harvest. Parts missing are usually an ear, an eye, the tongue, the lower jaw is stripped of all flesh, the sexual organs are cut out, the rectum is cored out, and in some cases, the blood is gone. Adding to the mystery is lack of tracks or other evidence. Mutilated cattle have been found on wet sand or rain-soaked ground with no tracks around them, not even their own. Whoa. Not and there is lack own. of tracks or other evidence. Mutilated cattle have been found on wet sand or rain-soaked ground with no tracks around them, not even their own. And the mutilations continue. Between May 1979 and January 1980, over 30 cattle in Canada had reportedly suffered this strange fate. Iowa had eight reported mutilations in the last months of 1979. Other states that had reported mutilations in 1979 were Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, Arkansas, Kansas and Nebraska, and Texas. All in places pretty close to Nevada, you know. Who or what is killing and mutilating these animals? Now, I got all kinds of stuff at home. Whole videos. If you saw the videos I got at home, and I got some of these in New Mexico and some of them up north, it would blow your mind, man. It, it would blow your mind. You know why? Because, well, I'm going to show you here. They say the only way those cuts could be made, they've had them to doctors, they say the only way those cuts could be made would be with laser surgery. And there ain't no electricity out in the middle of the Kansas fields. And a laser equipment would take several, like a truck to haul it. And say satanic cults ain't got laser equipment out in the middle of Missouri 100 miles nowhere where there ain't no roads or nothing brother that just don't happen been mutilated and we examined it and it's uh, no tracks the only tracks that we found on the first one were like a triangle See I that? don't know <laughs> they found a triangle print on the ground strange because we had never seen anything like that before it all remains a mystery I all the states it's happened, it's a mystery, as far as I'm concerned, what I read and hear about it. I got calls this this uh, this summer from Canada on two mutilations, they called me, and the way they described this, uh, it's just typical of our mutilations we had in 75. In good enough condition to perform lab examinations. Of those 19, nine, or about half, were considered to be cut with a sharp instrument. The rest were generally... Darling. When we first looked at it, it was just unbelievable uh, that you could take an animal and do this too without uh, leaving some kind of track, some kind of evidence behind, such as a cigarette butt. This was going on. Uh, we could pick out a very brilliant, huge, brilliant light in the yeah. sky. And we yeah. had a newsman take pictures of it. With a That's what they saw over the cattle dance, field. But all we got out of this was the movement of it and the light showing very brilliant. Several times we observed that, you know, smaller lights come out of this aircraft and then come down toward Earth. This huge, brilliant light. It don't make no sound. And then when it would move, it could move up and down, backwards, forwards, travel very rapidly. And after a while, these smaller lights you say, well, would... Well, Brother Danny, I, I see that, but that don't make no sense. Why would a demon spirit CO2 manifest and be interested in a cow? Well, well, did you see that scripture I read you a while ago? Think about that Sons of God scripture now. That's laser equipment. There's what you'd have to have to do it. It weighs about 400 pounds. In the hospital, it is powered by AC current from a wall plug. Experienced medical technicians need 20 minutes to get the laser unit ready for surgery. Clearly, it's not a convenient tool to drag around remote ranch lands. 
But because of the alleged burns found on some mutilated animals, a few people have jumped to the conclusion that maybe lasers are involved. It As in Logan County, the night sky has been lit with the glow of unknown flying objects. You say, why would it be just interested in cow? Because a cow has the same gestation period as a human being. They're the only animal it does. As it hovered over the town, now, it dropped a reproductive. film of ashes onto the ground below. The ashes contain... And there's something in the blood and the hemoglobin that they're using for experiment to be able to replace real blood. And scientists are doing that now. There's at least 25 elements in there. There's a good possibility that it may be something that's organic. And if it is, this just opens up a real bag of worms because uh, anything can happen. If Ain't that something? Well, let's look at this. We could do a whole study tonight just on those cattle mutilations. I got two or three videos at home, like an hour long, of just documented cases of the cattle mutilation. What about this? You ever been interested in that triangle down there? Man, that always has interested me. There have been so many thousands of planes ships disappear over the past 50 years over the Bermuda Triangle and not one trace of evidence has ever been found of one of them. They're gone. And did you know something? There's no wreckage. And it, they, they, there's nothing ever washes up. And nobody can find any evidence of it at all. They're just gone, just vanished. And did you know that's the deepest place in the ocean? And did you know they call that the Devil's Triangle? And you know that it's in Columbus' log that he saw a UFO going out of the water when he sailed into the Bermuda Triangle when he's come to discover America? It's in his diary. In Colum Christopher Columbus saw a light coming up out of the water going in the sky and recorded it. Now, they, won't, they won't tell you that in a public school, but it's a matter of fact. Check this out. Just four hours before discovering land, Christopher Columbus saw a bright glowing object come out of the sky, go into the water, and travel slowly through the water very close to the ship that he was on. Engraved onto a French token minted in the 1860s, is a disc-shaped flying object. The Bible says hell has gates. Experts say may have commemorated he a said daytime that the gates UFO of hell. sighting. The 14 experienced crewmembers flew out of Fort Lauderdale Naval right Air there. Station in Florida. That's a documented it case. A, a whole squadron flight. of planes flew Each out of Fort Lauderdale. Each plane had a full load of fuel, Watch and it. weather conditions were excellent. It's too cold in here, Bruce. But something strange down. happened. The flight leader called in and reported not having any sense of direction. They lost their sense Air of direction. Air then flying over the, the squadron triangle. to head due west. The leader, with alarm in his voice, then said, We don't know which way is west. Everything is wrong, strange. We can't be sure of any direction. Even the ocean doesn't look as it should. He then stated that weird, unidentified aircraft were closing in on them. His radio went dead. All five planes disappeared without leaving a trace. What's this? A giant Martin Mariner with a crew of 13 was dispatched to search for the five ships planes. and train planes and the went capability out to, to land on the roughest of seas. But this plane also disappeared into the grim silence of the Atlantic. What followed was the greatest search operation in history. For five days, an armada of 300 planes and 21 ships crisscrossed the sea and sky. But no trace of the six aircraft or 27 crew members were to be found. Wouldn't you think something would be day, floating? Or? It remains a mystery as to what happened. Six our aircraft just happened to all go dead at the same time? They all malfunctioned and run out of gas at the same time? You crazy, man. No, six of them. One, you might say that, not six. Physicists, astronomers, computer programmers, and technicians. How's that satellite I was telling you about? Check that thing out. In hopes of discovering radio waves that were created by intelligent beings. 
But why all of this special attention to the so human eyes and radar instruments have observed unbelievable aerial maneuvers, such as 90 degree turns of several thousand miles per hour, and have been clocked at speeds up to 16,000 miles per hour? They've there clocked them no at 16,000 miles an hour. Art skeptic that UFOs exist. The question is, where do they come from? They come from if they hell. come from... How real are the flying saucers? Officially called unidentified flying... Inspector General of the Air Force notified all air base commanders that flying saucers are a serious problem. The government of the United States has issued orders advising the military how to recognize the UFOs, how to report them, and how to handle fragments of them. Slowly but surely, the nature and extent of this remarkable phenomenon has become public knowledge. By patiently piecing together these bits of evidence as they become available, by carefully weighing the guarded statements of scientists and military agencies involved in the study of unidentified flying objects, we shall see that they are indeed serious business. The variety of from the Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps Radar specialists, aeronautical engineers, airport traffic controllers, astronomers, FBI agents, state county. Well, if we talk about that triangle, you'll notice that in some cases, and we ain't got time to get into all this now, we're going to hurry and get through here in a minute. Uh, in some cases, a plane will be flying over the Bermuda Triangle, and as it flies over the triangle, they say it'll enter into a green haze. There's always this green haze, like you see in the scary movies. And there's Reagan talking about. And they, they go into this green haze and they say they lose all sense of direction, can't control the airplane, and some of them never come out. And one of them will take off from uh, down in Florida. And I was, I was throwing that thing about Columbus, how he saw it and recorded it in his diary. And brother, there's the planes that disappear. And listen, folks, listen to me. They say... One of those planes got up out of this flight. That's it right there, I believe. I'll show you in just... No, that's not it, but I'll show you in just a second. second. See that green haze? They said he got up there and that green haze got all around him. And they lost track, couldn't tell where they were. And they lost track of where they... They couldn't, couldn't get any kind of direction. And ten minutes later, they come out of it. And they landed. When they come back on radar and landed, and they lost... Everybody lost ten minutes off their clock. On the plane. Stewardesses, captain, the whole crowd. Whatever that was, stop clocks. And then I remembered reading about uh, Charles Manson that walked into the courtroom when he was being tried in 1969 70 for all those crimes. And Charles Manson, when he walked in the courtroom, they said sometimes his presence would make the clock stop on the wall. I said, hey man, that green haze is whatever's in the mansion. And I said, hey, I remember Jack Hudson telling about that uh, lady down there that called him who was possessed of demons, and she called him, and he said, every time he talked to that woman, his clock stopped. He talked 15 minutes, his watch stopped 15 minutes. Of course, they don't know that. But you do. You ought to thank the Lord for it. And I have not experienced anything unusual, but I've known people who've seen what they refer to as UFOs, green glows coming out of the sky and crashing into the water and disappearing down into the depths. And they refer to them as UFOs, and I guess that's what they were, UFOs. But a strange... Last words to ever be heard from Flight 19. Listen. Don't come after us. They look like... What could Lieutenant Taylor have seen that caused him... From Flight 19... Don't come perfectly clear. Suddenly, he was surrounded by an intense greenish light, so powerful, in fact, that he could no longer see outside of the plane. Wakeley said his instruments then began to malfunction badly. Soon, there was little he could do but release the controls and let the plane fly itself. Then, according to Wakeley, the glow just as suddenly faded and everything returned to normal. Airlines Flight 401. What's this? The Miami Tower was called for a time check. The instrument panel clock was right on. They were 20 minutes out and right on schedule. 
Later, the co-pilot would remember seeing a strange green mist that enveloped the aircraft, but otherwise everything was completely normal. Never seen anything. But in the Miami Tower, the air traffic controller was jolted when the blip of the approaching Flight 727 suddenly vanished from the radar screen. I've just lost Flight 727. The controller immediately went into emergency priority status. Within minutes, the Coast Guard search and rescue squadron was in action, and the Miami airport prepared for the worst. I think my watch is broken. When the flight attendant checked for any last-minute instructions, she couldn't believe she had completed her usual 10 to 12 minute cabin duties in less than three minutes. And the co-pilot was surprised to discover the greenish mist that enveloped the aircraft since the time check was gone. Not only from about the aircraft, but from the sky itself. Precisely 10 minutes from the time Flight 727 had vanished from the radar screen, it just as suddenly and mysteriously reappeared. The complex equipment was in perfect working order, as the ongoing computer and manual scans verified. Flight 727 landed without incident, with the crew understandably curious about the emergency equipment along the runway. And they were all incredulous when told that their arrival was 10 minutes late, despite the fact that the instrument panel clock synchronized exactly with the earlier tower time check. It was now, along with every one of the crew's watches, ten minutes slow. And what of that you green think they even know about Could it demons? somehow identify the doorway you think they even into know another about time? Off the east coast of Japan, like called the Devil's Sea. No, if you went in the center of the Devil's Triangle, and you bored a hole through the center of the Earth, you would come out in the center of the Devil's Sea. Oh, stop that. And the Devil's Sea and the Devil's Triangle are the only two places on Earth where the compass points to the true north not the magnetic north. Could this really be the solution to the centuries-old mystery of the Bermuda Triangle? And if so, oh, the, that is, no Earth. There's all the ones that's disappeared on record. Planes and ships. Well, let's move along here and see them pyramids. Where'd them things come from? Did you know that we don't have the equipment now to build the Great Pyramid? Many scientists agree that physically, mathematically, and scientifically, the Great Pyramid of Khufu could not have been built. And yet, there it is, 42 stories high, Listen. covering an area the size of 10 football fields, an almost solid mass of intricately fitted stone blocks, each weighing two and a half to 10 tons. Enough stone to build 35 Empire State Buildings, Whoa. with several tons left over. Wow. Its alignment to true north is almost perfect and the precision of its construction has never been duplicated. But could the of a hundred thousand men replaced every three months that's why they built put it the in Great the movies, Pyramid but that's in impossible. 20 years? But is that possible? To build the Great Pyramid in 20 years, as some archaeologists claim, would have meant setting one of those huge stones every three and a half minutes, 24 hours a day. That would require a technology we don't have today. But getting the stones in Hollywood has helped to promote that hundreds of thousands of slaves were used to build the pyramids. Nothing could be further from the truth. The Egyptians of the fourth dynasty were needed. 5,000 mile radius to have supplied the workforce needed. See? But if the what growers, he's saying is, where'd they get all them rocks out there in that sandy desert? In the schools right now is facts when they're not even substantial theories. He said they're teaching that in school right there like these guys here are doing and it's not even substantial theories, it's a bunch of bull. There ain't no way they could have built them things. You say, who did? I don't know who did it, but I know them people didn't. Somebody said Job built them. It took a strong person, I'll guarantee you that. We could build it today. In this manner can be demonstrated, but some rather obvious consideration should have dispelled this notion long ago. The only trees available in ancient Egypt were date palms. And as a food source, it's unlikely they would have been cut down. Importing logs would have required more shipping than Egypt has ever possessed in its entire history, just to transport the 25 million trees needed. Next, it's virtually impossible to roll a log on stone ship roads. 
But even if they could be rolled, the great weight of the stones would have crushed the logs to pulp within a very short distance. The traditional explanations of the origin of the pyramids have been accepted for years. But should we carefully re-examine those long-held notions? The discrepancies between the theories and the facts seem to demand it. Amazingly, the sciences of geology, mathematics, and astronomy seem to reach their zenith with the construction of the Great Pyramid. Construction techniques were used that can't be duplicated today. How could this be? What did the builders of the Great Pyramid know that we don't? More to the point, where did they learn it? And what new scientific evidence is there that suggests real possibility that other pyramid. It's doubtful that ancient Egyptians had any knowledge of modern geology, and without this science, it's inconceivable that a structure this size could be built which would not crumble from lack of a proper foundation. Listen there. Normally, it would just sink slowly into the ground. In modern construction, engineers find a settling rate of six inches in 100 years acceptable for office buildings. In 5,000 years, the Great Pyramid, weighing 14 billion pounds, has settled less than one half inch. This engineering marvel construction. Y'all hear what he said? If the builders could maintain each side of the 756 foot wall within six inches of being perfectly straight, then it would be a tremendous accomplishment. But the Great Pyramid is only off of straight alignment by approximately one quarter of an inch. That's totally impossible to duplicate in today's modern construction field. The, great, the year and the precession of the equinoxes, they knew that the Earth was a sphere, and they knew how to compute latitude and longitude accurately. The geation of the Great Pyramid of Giza is perhaps its single most amazing characteristic. Its sides run almost exactly. And uh, I don't ever want to be the type of person that won't accept the truth when it hits me in the face. And uh, I want you to open your Bibles tonight to Zechariah chapter number 5. Zechariah chapter number 5. And this is not really...